Um, do I agree with Neil's argument that Imric is evil? No, I actually don't. And I was pissed off about that today reading that. Is Neil around? Oh, he's streaming. Um, let's look at it, because I don't think it's fair, to be honest. Like, wait, where are you seeing? Oh, did I have uh... Yeah, yeah. I was downloading FX as the Bear, which is a great show if you guys have watched it. Um, it was in here. Let's read Neil's comments there. Um... <clears throat> Imric consented to and volunteered for this. The name of the game is Killing Scoria. Anton is essentially dead and Imric wants to defy the laws of God. I mean, no mention of Tyrael, by the way. That's the first thing I'll say. He wants to defy the laws of gods and nature and do the impossible to bring him back. Not only that, but he wants it done now. So he finds this woman of great evil. He knows she's evil. He can feel it. His brother sees it. His dragon is warning him against it. And this evil, timeless creature offers him some quick power for a price. He wasn't forced into this. He said, quote, I'd walk through hell and back with my brother and then walked into hell. Uh, did he have a bad time? Yes. Did he know he was going to be bang along the single greatest, most horrible, most flesh hungry and lecherous being he's ever dreamed of? Yes. Okay, well, you know, maybe. Um, it's like going up to Elon Musk. Hey, I need a ride into space on your next ship. And them saying, well, sure, but to do it, you've got to have filthy, dirty, demeaning online sex with me. And I've got a sick appetite and saying, yeah, sure, I can do that. Musk might be an abusive, manipulative, evil douche canoe, but in this situation, you're the one driving the exchange and volunteering for the job. Atropos didn't force herself on him. He consented, and not a, I have no other choice, so I must consent, which isn't really consent at all. I mean, I feel like that does uh, apply, but we'll, we'll get to my arguments later. This is a side quest. This is optional. There was no need to do this. Looking for Anton's a fool's errand to begin with, and there are slower routes he could have taken if this path was distasteful. Again, I don't necessarily think there were. Uh, Imric had options. He chose this path of his own volition. He chose the darkest timeline. He chose to give himself over to that. Again, no mention of Tyrael. You know, putting it all on me. He chose to give himself over to this greatest evil in exchange for power and a chance at his impossible goal. He knew it was costing him his soul. And to anyone even paying half attention, that's exactly what was on the table. I mean, I didn't necessarily know that. Some ageless, future-telling baby-eating monster who wants you she's so hungry for flesh is obviously talking about more than just simple sexual intercourse. Oh, well, yeah. You shoot yourself in the foot to get out of the draft, you're not a victim of gun violence. If you burn your house to kill a spider, you're not a victim of arson. If you volunteer to round up undesirables for a Nazi, you don't get to claim innocence. You choose to walk the path of darkness when there are other paths available. You're responsible for your fate. It wasn't assault or rape or non-consensual violence. This was either an act of self-sacrifice, an act of greed, or Nick slash Imric finding out like, okay. So that's not the main argument. I think it's this next one that kind of annoyed me here. Uh, I gotcha. It just needed saying. People want to believe that Imric is a good person who was the victim of something evil. The truth is that Imric is the sort of evil that mask. Imric is the sort of evil that masquerades as good. He talks like he's good, acts like he's good, and will admonish others for their misbehaviors. And then he'll sell you down the river because it's easier than doing the right thing. I mean, that is just not true. Imric is the sort of monster that lies to himself about himself. Again, I don't think that's true. Imric will snatch a babe from its mother's breast and feed it to a monster of nightmares, but balk at the last minute and shift the burden of the deed to someone else. His evil is in his weakness of spirit. I don't necessarily disagree with that bit about weakness of spirit, coupled with unrestrained power. You know the saying, all it takes for evil to succeed is for good men to stand by and do nothing. Imric not only stands by, he helps out, all while whispering to himself, there wasn't another way. This is good in the long run. What does it matter now? My actions won't make a meaningful difference. Imric's a collaborator. That's why he drinks again. He knows who he is and wants to forget. Well, okay, so first of all, there's some contradictions here. He knows who he is and wants to forget. At the same time, um, you said that, you know, he lies, the sort of monster that lies to himself about himself. So he can't be both. I think Imric knows full well what he did was wrong and is living with the consequences. I think this last line here is more true than the rest of it. <clears throat> also, he talks like he's good, acts like he's good, and will admonish others for their misbehaviors, and then he'll sell you down the river because it's easier than doing the right thing. That's not true. Imric does not sell people down the river because it's easier than doing the right thing. That's not something that he's ever done, really. I think this is much more the case of someone taking a... Ha you know, carrying out a heinous act uh, in desperation. And I don't think you can necessarily define someone's entire life and character based on one act. Doesn't Koibu define good and evil more on the lines of selfishness versus selflessness, but saving Anton is a selfless act? Yeah, but I think Neil would say that I'm doing it because Imric wants Anton back, not because he's worried that Anton is being left for dead, which I think is 
not true. I mean, Imrik wanting him back for himself is definitely a motivation, but I don't think it's the top motivation. I think number one motivation is just wanting to kill Scoria. And the second is um, like not wanting to leave his brother for dead. The comment below makes a compelling argument. Imrik's the sort of evil to kick a dog and say he did it for the dog's sake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's true I'm um, nice to see you all uh, coming out to defend me though good job guys the funny thing is Atropos wasn't necessarily holding us ransom but Neil was in a way because we were kind of presented with a lot of bad options and this was the only realistic option to actually help Anton so yes there was other paths that weren't 100% explored but I think it was kind of clear to everyone that this was the this was the main way to do it. Like, it was like, if you want to save Anton and do so in any sort of timely manner, then this is the way to do it. Now, looking back now that I think about it, I think we're probably going to end up fast forwarding like years and years because of the time dilation, which means there was never a good answer. And it was always going to, always going to result in disaster no matter what we did. Uh, if you pop out of the realms with no level up and it's far in the future, Drakus is fully fallen and shines dead and the list of Scorius generals has gotten bigger. Do you just go full Scorched Earth and sell your soul for more power and start farming souls or something? Yeah, maybe something like that, Nova. I don't know. I hope that if, if we come back super far in the future that we can kill Scoria with the element of surprise. Imric always wants to take the harder path to do the right thing, but his brothers never let him because they can't afford it. I agree. Um... So Slothman says, Jesus Christ, you know, having watched and listened to Neil for years, this is the most curt and blatant judgment of a character I've ever seen him make on a character. True. I feel like he feels like he has to defend the scene a little bit. I don't think he necessarily does. Um, But obviously this tweet is... Somebody posting this, I think he probably feels a little bit defensive, which I understand. But I think that's... A, I do think this is a slightly unfair character characterization of Imric. The thing that get the thing that annoys me about it a little bit is that he's like he's like defining my character for me a little bit. Like I feel like I Imric's not evil. He's good, but he's human at the end of the day and he's been put in a difficult almost impossible position where he's lost one brother and his older brother who's like their leader wants him to go down a certain path. I think it's it's unfair to characterize him as evil and it kind of like takes away my definition of who I think the character is like I, I think he's a good person put in a difficult spot who's gone along with a choice that maybe he didn't disagree with but he sympathizes with and he is following his older brother be it the baby because I think that the baby is the only thing that's that is an evil act the the sex act thing that's not necessarily evil it's not hurting anyone other than himself Oh, wait, I saw this on Destiny subreddit. Are you all uh, fucking... Hans? <laughs> Thank you, mate. La, la, la. The <laughs> fucking... First time catching your stream live. Been watching the D&D &D for so many years. Glad you have been streaming the last couple years. Miss the CK3, though. I miss CK3, too. I was thinking maybe I'd play a bit of that later, because there's the new expansion that I've not played. Um... Yeah, I was saying that the the sort of graphical way that the, the subscriptions are shown has changed, so it's throwing me off a little bit. But um, what are your thoughts on Black Elves? Right, I saw some stuff on Destiny subreddit, and I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're all getting you're all reing because there's Black Elves in the Lord of the Rings show. Is that right? Like you. What? Who cares? I don't know what Destiny's take is. I'm hoping that his case is his take is who cares. But uh yeah, why why shouldn't there be black elves? So fucking stupid. Like who cares? Who actually cares? Like when people are complaining that there was black people in The Witcher, like, oh, but it was set in Poland and there's no black people in Poland. Like, who gives a fuck? Does that really like if that bothers you so much, it says more about you than anything else. There are problems are three sex was voluntary that's true but there were big problems that waiting months for anton will be dead also there were no other options that would not contradict the statement that anton will die with time the statement that imric's evil is just bollocks also you need to think about this that pcs have to save the other pcs like what are you going to do play 10 episodes without him 
yeah well there's definitely like a save the pc mindset underlying everything as well but i do think that everything's kind of understandable in character i think neil never implied there was no other way i disagree because i explored a bunch of other paths like people you know i explored the the Valthara angle that was pretty much the first thing i did and that was kind of shut down the hydroxis angle uh didn't work the trying to travel the planes myself didn't work uh trying to learn spells i failed the spells like there was no real good answer right would you not say killing 100 babies to save anton is evil the line has to be drawn somewhere yeah, I agree the line's somewhere. And I still think killing the one baby is an evil act. I'm not saying it's not an evil act. But I'm saying that that doesn't define Imric as evil. There's a difference between... You know, making a bad decision and being an evil person. Can you add polls to the actions available? And can you? I can do a poll as if Imric's evil. We can do that right now. Do you mean now in the stream or... Like on Twitter or something. I feel like you need to be malicious in order to be evil, but Imric has good intentions. Yes. True, intellectual brick. They're making fun of the right wing. Oh, it's uh, it's ironic, right? Okay, I see. Destiny's take is who cares. He had a discussion with Lauren Southern and AJW about it on a show who argued about it, right? I don't know who AJW is, but I'm assuming that Lauren Southern thinks that it's... uh. Wokeism gone mad or something. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Good. I'm glad he doesn't care. You don't know these days with his descent into the right wing, though, you know. I mean, even the elf didn't do shit. And he was meant to do what? Atropos. I mean, even the elf didn't do shit. And he was meant to did what? I mean, Nova. I can't. I don't. I can't understand this. Sorry. But yeah, the elf's here. He didn't do shit. I'm not sure what, what do you expect him to do. It was dark. The more powerful you are, the more a slip-up means. Yeah, I agree with that as well. Like, um, you know, at that level of power, then um, making a mistake like that has much greater consequences than for a normal person. There was a high-level mage in Solemn, I think. Sounded iffy, though. Yeah, I don't... I don't remember that, to be honest. Salsa Brains. I think it might have been mentioned in passing, but like... The, I think it was like, there's probably a high-level mage in Solon. Because I think somebody asked, like, oh, can you travel to Destiny? Asked Ark so much. She was like, oh, maybe Imric can. Or maybe there'd be a mage in Solon. We got 6535. Do you know what? There's actually more of you out there than I would have thought saying that he's evil. Right? I'm assuming that you're all memeing. I don't understand how this makes sense in Neil's head. He gave no other option to save Anton and says he's dead. Basically saving him is defying the gods. But then provides proof that he's still alive. Yeah, well, Neil wanted us to do it. He wanted to tempt us into it. Which I think is fine. I do think it stains your character in an irreversible evil way. Well, it definitely stains him. I mean, it seems like my soul is gone, so <laughs> yeah. But I don't think it's the end-all, be-all to who your character is morally. Yeah, exactly. Well, this is the thing that I just take umbrage with. It's like, it's these lines here. The truth is that Imric's the sort of evil that masquerades as good. He talks like he's good, acts like he's good. I mean, okay, he talks good, he acts good, and he admonishes others for misbehaviors. All true, right? Like, if it sounds like a chicken and it walks like a chicken, it's probably a fucking chicken. And then he'll sell you down the river because it's easier than doing the right thing. Like, that's not, that's patently not true. Like, when is that, when has that happened? Imric is the sort of monster that lies to himself about himself. I don't think that's just not true either. Like, he knows full well that it was fucked up to do that. I even said it in the start of the episode. I think basically the first thing I said to Tyrrell was that sacrificing a baby to this thing, it's more than just the baby. You know, it's got to have consequences beyond that. Um, and we need to be really fucking careful that this is what we want to do. And then I actually said to Tyrrell, you have to make the decision. If you want me to give up my arm, I'll give up my arm. You know, I think I said it. I think even if that means me giving up my arm, I'll follow you. So to put it all on me, I just think is unfair. Like you might say that it, it's cowardice to not make the decision and not argue about it and to just go along with it. Like I agree with that. There's definitely an element of that to it. And I think I kind of had that in mind when I was doing it. 
And you could say that that kind of cowardice um, begets evil. A bit like for those of you who've, made, who've, who've sat through the uh, Stuart Lee bit about Jeremy Clarkson and Richard Hammond. You know, Jeremy Clarkson's the evil bully, but Richard Hammond's the guy laughing along with it so he doesn't get picked on. There's an evilness in that. But I, again, I still don't think you can just define Imrik's whole character like the way it's implied in this statement. TOS is not tonight, no. I think Destiny's away, isn't he? Mafia Joey says, Is there an act that Tyrael would suggest where Imrik would take a stand? Yeah, plenty of. Plenty of times that's happened. Feels like the character just lets Tyrael do as he wishes, in which case, does it even matter if Imrik's going to Well, I don't think that's true. I think basically at every other juncture in the campaign, I've made a point of standing up to Tyrael and Anton when they've wanted to do bad things. I mean, Charos, one evil act doesn't make you an evil person, but the horridness of the act does take you squarely out of good. Perhaps. I get, like, on a human level, like, what even is, like, good and evil, you know? Was there any chance of giving up on Anton? Yeah, I would have... I would have given up on him at the end of the... at the start of the episode. Imric's evil in my eyes only partially as he takes evil actions without large regret and doesn't really stand his ground if others take evil actions if it's his family. But I don't think that's true. Like, I mean, I can't remember every act off the top of my head. But I've definitely stood up to Tyrion and Anton. Um, the one that I remember is when they wanted to kill the carriage driver uh, in Solemn. I think they did kill the carriage driver, right? Uh, and I don't think that I take evil actions without large regret. I would say that the killing of this baby is pretty much the only evil action that I've carried out. As long as, it, as if you make excuses for war, which I think is justifiable. Uh, I think that's pretty much the only evil act he's done, and he definitely has a huge regret about it. The problem is that Imric is the only one who had the potential to give other options a try. He gave four other possibilities a shot to no avail. I don't know what anyone has thought about. There were other feasible options. Chloe the DM said through Atropos, I'll see you again when you come back to me. Yeah. I agree, Sam. I did try. I, I, I gave avenues for different ways, but... It was clear that there would be a cost to get Anton back. And uh, I don't mind the personal sacrifice of the character. Like, I understand that. I think, like, Imric losing his soul to save Anton, I think that's quite a good story. I just don't want the campaign to be lost by by time skipping a huge amount of time. You know, that's all. I'm okay with the personal sacrifice. I, I, but this is, I'm, I'm literally talking here about Neil's description, which I just think is a bit unfair. I do find it both funny and sad that Neil is more critical of Emmerich, who at least tries to be good, than he is with Nilrim, who is an active child murderer and torturer. Yeah. It's because you always defend Neil that you've led so many astray on this vote. Yeah, you're probably right, insulin defendants. Uh, because Chewy Dewey Tui says, why do people think he's evil? Uh, because of what Neil's saying here, look. Uh, he's evil now for sure, before his night with the Vape Queen. I don't, yeah, I don't... I don't think that makes him evil. I... I don't think the, the act with Atropos has any impact on his morality because it was purely impacting himself. You're only half condemning it when it's full on railroading. Well, it's not railroading because we could have just not done it. That's the thing. That's what, For everyone saying it's railroading, you got to remember that there was every opportunity to just not go through with it. It's only railroading if you assume that we had no choice but to pursue Anton at all costs. <clears throat> Which I don't think is necessarily true. Be bright. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna invade Neil's stream to. Well, he's on critical feedback though, isn't he? But I don't want to start an argument about it. You know, the right thing would be giving up an arm or not giving a drop us anything. Well, it wouldn't have ended with the arm if we'd have given her the arm. We would have learned that he was on the plane of air, and then we would have had to do the other things anyway. So, um, yes, that would have been less evil because it would have been self-sacrificing versus sacrificing the baby. Um, but Imric couldn't give an arm. Like, mechanically, I couldn't have given up an arm as Imric because I couldn't cast spells, I couldn't use the bow. So that's why I was hoping that Tyrael would give his arm. But I don't think it was Imric's place to tell Tyrael that that's what he should do. Did you not blast some weakling that attacked him in a Kuba knowing he could not be killed? Yes, I did do that. But, you know, you're going to sneak up behind someone and try and stab them. And it's a guy holding a machine gun. Like, you know, what do you expect? 
He kicked a dog out of pure malevolence, then lied and said it was the best thing for the dog. <laughs> True. <laughs> Would you say that Tyrell's evil because he'll do whatever is necessary to kill Scoria? He'll be as adaptable as possible. Thus, good and evil are interchangeable to him, depending on the nature of the quest. Uh, I think that it's not necessarily evil because in his mind, he's doing it for a greater purpose. So it's not purely selfish. It's not like he wants to kill Scoria necessarily for himself. But I do think that there is arguments to be made there. Because so I think Tyrell puts the family ahead of everything else, basically, which you could argue is a type of selfishness. Was there any chance of not chasing after Anton? Um, you'd have to ask Steven, because I, I felt like he had to make that choice, not me. I think it's after Scoria Fimric doesn't dedicate his life to kill a Tropus that he's evil. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think you can kill a god, can you? The whole thing in the Merfolk Temple. Yeah, that's true. But they did attack us, not the other way around. I mean... We could have been just going there for a chat, but they attacked us on sight. Don't take it comments too seriously. I like Emmerich. I just don't think he is the good guy. For me, it's more self-centered, family first. And after that, there's some responsibility to king and country, which trumps all their interests. No matter the people involved. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. But I think that's a pretty common... Like, if you think of your average good knight in a story, then their loyalty is to their kingdom. And they would probably... Like, like is was William good? I mean, clearly, we we killed a lot of Nulls that maybe we didn't have to kill. Um, but I still think of William as a good character. Because I felt I feel like the moral framework by which he lived his life uh, allowed the actions that he took. The post seems like a case where people take even the slightest action towards immorality, then you're completely evil. No other action could, in their eyes, make you a nuanced person. It's only evil in their eyes. Yeah, I, that's kind of how I feel about it, too. It's like people have forgotten that we have a neutral category for characters who aren't lawful good paladins. Well, I don't even think that to be lawful good, you have to be a paladin. You know, I mean, I think that if if alignment is a scale, then obviously a paladin is right, right in the lawful good corner. But you can still be within that lawful good quadrant without being a paladin. I don't think you'd help yourself talking about Imrit coming back to her and becoming a lich. Well, yeah, I obviously, that then that would be more more sort of going further down that path. But I, I'm when I was saying that, I was more talking about like how someone might, someone in his position might react to the sort of the trauma and the loneliness of life once Scory is dead. And um, I could see a world where you might sort of go back into that. I'm not saying that is what he's going to do. I don't know about becoming a lich though. I, I know that was the title of the video, but I think that was just a memory sort of. Christ Sostridge, thanks for the 16 months. Imric's not evil, he's the most selfless of the three brothers. Nothing he does is for selfish reasons. You literally messaged him. What did you say to him, MFG? What options were there if the party decides to leave Anton for dead? Seems like an impossible battle. Well, we could have just equipped another high level fighter. And probably had a decent shot. But I, I think, and I was explaining this last time I was streaming, uh, it's easy to say, oh yeah, you could have just found another high level fighter and equipped them, which is true. But from an in game character perspective, how could it, Imric and Tyrrell really believe that there could be anyone else that could be, could take Anton's place? You know, they've fought together as a group for years, they've fought and killed multiple dragons together. They understand how to fight dragons, they understand how each other fight. Yes, mechanically, you could sub in a high-level fighter and have Moot and play him, and then you'd still have all that same experience. But in reality, Imric looking at the Queen's Guard and thinking, can this person come to Scoria's lair with me and fight Scoria? The answer is probably no, because he doesn't know how to fight a dragon. I'm not going to look at your role in his chat, Nova, but you can paste it here if you want. Neil also did try some similar shit with William, but was proven wrong, though. If you, What, well, did he? I don't remember that. If you want to go full evil lich, you can go that route. If you want to go with his interpretation with realizing that the current good Imric is a mask. 
No, I don't want to do that. I don't. I want to play the character like that. This, I don't mind Neil necessarily having an opinion about it, but I just I don't mind anyone else having the opinion. But this is. It's just. It's very matter of fact, right? He's not. There's no. Um, there's no interpretation in what Neil's saying here. It's like this is the fact that Imric is evil, and he's the DM, so it's like. It's kind of true then if he's saying it and it kind of goes against like my how I view the character so it... yeah I don't know whatever I feel like there was not enough exploration in other ways to not have to use a tropus I believe if you're taking a stand before giving the baby you can come back to us some other day but maybe taking two days or so to really actually explore I don't want to type too much I mean yeah okay fair enough but we did spend a whole episode exploring other options like we did four hours of it like were we really going to do another four hours of exploring dead ends when we were given away right at the end of the episode after spending the whole episode looking for it and knowing that the night before neil was prepping bravo on his uh campaign planning you know we were on their temple for loot fish sticks but they did attack us on site, you know. I, I was about to have a change of heart about the merfolk, but uh, they they attacked me, so I had no choice. William was a god amongst men, that's for sure. True. We all live in his shadow. I hope Scoria has the orb of winter in the future. Yeah. Imric's aura is grey now. Would you say Tyrell is evil? Um, Maybe now. Maybe now. Yeah. Oh yeah, Nick, I don't know if you've already done this, but if you haven't, you might want to put that Amulet of Recall into a regular pocket and not the pack of holding, just in case you find yourself underwater again. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. No, I think I'm wearing it though, right? I was trying to think when we were playing the other day, do I have another Amulet now? From what I've read here, if you would describe the actions of a lawful good paladin to the shot, they'd call him evil. True. I'm honest at this point, so I think it might be best to stop trying to live up and justify you being good for the people both in and out of game. Just do what your character would do if he's a good character. It's true what other people say at this point. Oh, absolutely, says so and I, I agree with that, and that is in, that is what I intend to do. I'm only talking about it just because I read it today. And it just kind of pushed, rubbed me up the wrong way a little bit, if you so to speak. The concept of evil is so weird. Evil and good are such philosophical concepts that you could argue anything and nothing is good or evil. That makes everything not good and not evil. Use other concepts and stuff. Yeah, it's a bad concept, but it's built into D&D, so I think it's fair enough to talk about it. Look for Van. Uh, what would Van have done? I don't even know if I'd call... At the moment of his death, I don't think I would have called Malachi evil. There was definitely times where you would have described him as evil, but I feel like he redeemed himself somewhat in the last moments of his life. Remember when Neil tried to portray William as a bully in Fro Fro? I don't, I don't remember that. Can you? Was it when we were interacting with the guards at the at the camp? I feel like with guards being around, literally, it was going to be hopeless, and that's why you go pray to Matrigal or something. But it wouldn't have worked. It, it wouldn't have worked there. Malachi's not a good guy. No, no. Imagine you reach Anton. He's on the celestial plane, chilling with Valfar, and he doesn't want to go back. That would be funny. You prioritize Neil's prep work too much. Players decide where events go. Oh, of course. I'm not saying for any second that. I mean, I'm just saying that Neil had the idea of Atropos being a way for us to do it, um, and probably in his head thought there isn't really any other way. This is kind of the only way they can do it, at least in a short time frame. So I should probably prep this. Oh, it's the Con Amulet. You're right. Obviously. Yeah, it's a good point that. So I probably have to like. Well, I wonder if I could like hang it around my neck, but just have it not work because the con amulet's already there. If you know what I mean. Now it's a good point though. Um, like if I'm on ten health, can I even use the recoil amulet? Because wouldn't I have to take off the con amulet to do so? If indifference to evil makes you evil, then what is neutral? No, no, yeah, it's the Con Amulet Stiletto. It is, it is, it is, sorry. Are people with good intentions whose actions cause bad outcomes evil? Um, I think not straight away, in my opinion, Nick Miller. I think, like, 
once or twice, you maybe can be forgiven. After that, maybe uh, the onus is on you to stop doing the thing. He can divine some things for you. What can he? What can Van divine, divine then? That the Martha and the Nadina's cleric couldn't. Have you guys spoken to your mum about this? Is there an inherent connection in D and D between mother and child? Any way to magically manipulate something out of that? Yeah, I don't think so. Tom Fields. It's a nice idea, but it's too late now. Anyway. Can you imagine Ryan translating for Destiny? Laughing my ass off, Steve would get so mad. Oh god, you mean like in Frofro, -Fro? yeah. <laughs> Mate, that was so was so frustrating to have to stick to that. I'm so glad we did though. I'm so glad I could hold my tongue and just let it happen. Because the min-maxer in me at the time was really... There were moments where I was like, Ryan, you are completely fucking this. But I stuck to it and I, I think it improved the show for it. Greg would trigger Mooton like Devin did, even if Greg is a cool guy. Yeah, maybe. I mean, Greg, I don't think Greg would be like that anymore, though, so. Greg was amazing in Fro for all things considered. Absolutely. Greg's the man. His Beyond the Mist stuff is pretty good. Why did you not use the Iron Stones of the Green Dragon? Because there was just a risk of them being destroyed, either through absorbing too many spells or being directly attacked. And if they get directly attacked, they can be shattered, and then we'd be fucked for Scoria. But maybe we should have, though, you know, in, in hindsight. Mr. Mutant Stare, true. Greg would have sacrificed both arm and baby. Yeah, he would have done. Will a party member die during the Anton rescue arc? God, I hope not. I don't think you can get your soul back. Anything at Trapper Seats seems to be gone for good. I think instead of that, replacing the missing part with something else would be the way to go. Maybe something like the Orb of Winter. Oh shit, become like a, a winter soul. That would be cool. What do you think is the biggest what if in any campaign? Um, what if we'd close the portal? And <laughs> yeah, boy. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, what if we'd close the portal and hardcore heroes? Um, what else? Uh, what if... Spoilers. What if, uh... Yaramir had worn his amulet? Let's try and think of the biggest what if moments for each campaign. So obviously for hardcore heroes, it was the portal. For... Frofro, it was... Well, just if that battle had gone differently, basically. Because the events that followed would have been so much different if we'd have had the, everyone there. k I hope you're happy, mate, that I'm literally not speaking in full sentences here because of one guy in chat who said he doesn't want spoilers. It's probably stupid of me, but... Um, what if, for Odam, it would be what if Neil explained... The situation properly and my character didn't get captured um for gnomes terms and catacombs it'd probably be <laughs> what if uh what if lily's cleric didn't throw a knife at the fucking philosopher's stone i think that's it that's all the campaigns right no well for teams of scoria yeah it'll probably end up being what what if we'd have just left Anton? Honestly, this campaign's gone the way of Odam. What could happen? Drax is destroyed and the boy's going to run it down. I I don't know. It's a bit unfair, I think. Would love to see a two-player campaign with me and Sean or me and Ryan. Yeah, I'd like that too. Is um, Greg doesn't like you either. <laughs> Like Greg's like a, you know, he's a, he's a, like, you know, he knows his own mind. He likes what he likes, basically. He's fan Yaramir's notes on putting someone's soul back into place. Imric, Winter God, Magari. Oh yeah, maybe right. We, we find the Orb of Winter. We infuse our empty soul with the Orb of Winter. And then with that power, we kill Atropos and take her position as the Winter God. Uh, Greg takes over campaigns too much. I don't think that's true. He did kind of take over Hardcore Heroes a little bit, but I don't think he took over Fro Fro. <laughs> if you close the portal, you'd be level 14 right now, retired in the grand magic city of Shirebrook. <laughs> yeah. At this point, Neil might be wacky enough to kill Van William Grimes and Darth off screen. No. Twit longer when? No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to be doing that.